My paper is actually more of a general overview of uh, microblogs. Uh, so uh, it, uh, it's kind of directed uh, uh, not sp at specific parts, but more of a kind of historical uh, discussion. Uh, and then also I look at uh, concentration on political elements of the uh, microblog phenomenon, because that's my, uh, my specialty field, is uh, political science. Uh, so uh, the talk then traces recent development of microblogs and considers uh, how and why they've grown so popular and the ways the government has reacted to them. And I conclude uh, briefly with some discussion of how they may shape future online discourse and in particular with uh, uh, potential for uh, political change. Uh, we've seen then over the last decade or so different uh, tools for Chinese to post their ideas on the internet. Uh, probably six or seven years ago you remember uh, BBS, uh, bulletin boards, uh, were very popular in China. Uh, they were then replaced by uh, blogs. Uh, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. Um, maybe just skip this slide here. Uh, they were then replaced uh, by blogs, uh, which, uh, as you can see here, uh, started in the middle of the last decade to become very popular. Uh, this uh, slide, here, uh, slide here shows uh, the dark blue line shows the percentage of Internet users total. Uh, who had blogs, uh, and then the total number of uh, internet users are in the, the pink, uh, sort of purple line there. Uh, you can see then that blogs also uh, have kind of leveled off in interest. Uh, so in the last couple of years, the percentage of Chinese internet users posting blogs has been uh, only rising slightly. Um, in the middle of 2011, there were more than 300 million blog sites, but uh, but it's hard to quantify whether people are actually posting uh, the uh, information on a regular basis. Probably uh, a good percentage, although I don't know exactly how many, of these blogs have been essentially abandoned. Um, unlike uh, blogs, uh, microblogs, and so we've heard a lot about these couple of uh, companies in the last few days, uh, Tangshun, uh, Tencent, uh, and uh, Xinlang Weibo, uh, Xina Weibo. Uh, are the other uh, two main microblog providers. So unlike uh, blogs, which uh, essentially have no limits on word content, microblogs, like Twitter, and kind of an imitation of Twitter, have a 150 uh, Chinese character limit. Um, but unlike Twitter, uh, you can say a lot more in 140 characters uh, than you can in 140 uh, Latin letters. Um, the, uh, the earliest microblogs were introduced in 2007. Um, so I can sort of put up the, this kind of uh, miracle progression here by a company called Fanfo. So actually Tencent and, uh, uh, and Sina were a little bit late to the uh, microblog party. Uh, users grew uh, with Fanfo already to about one million in the uh, middle of 2009. Uh, but then you may remember in July of 2009, uh, riots in Xinjiang province uh, forced uh, essentially all of those microblog sites to shut down. Uh, Sina and Tencent took advantage of this uh, uh, problem for Fanfo by launching their own sites. Uh, uh, Sina, in particular, uh, had a lot of uh, celebrity bloggers uh, under the contract, uh, and so they just migrated them into the, the microblog sphere. Uh, and so uh, uh, this was uh, uh, kind of a good time to do so because uh, we. Uh, uh, they were rather apolitical, and so something that the government didn't care about. You can see here then that uh, by the end of 2009, there were about 8 million microblog users, and the number exploded in 2010 uh, and uh, quadrupled uh, again uh, last year to about a quarter of a billion microblogs. Again, we're not really quite sure how many of these are active. Uh, 2000, to, to compare with the American case, for example, in 2010, the Pew Research Center uh, in the United States uh, found that about 21% of Twitter users never checked their accounts for material posted by others. Uh, and another 20% checked less than every few weeks. And only 36% of Twitter users uh, checked their, uh, their sites more than once a day. One reason for this very rapid growth uh, in uh, microblog accounts over the last couple of years was the explosion in 3G uh, mobile handset uh, use. In February of 2010, there were only 16 million uh, 3G users uh, in China, 3G cell phones. Uh, today, there are more than 152 million. Uh, so microblog is very nice for small handsets, small screen, a limited number of words. You can read it. Uh, and so that works quite well. Also note that, of course, uh, 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 3G handsets have cameras. Uh, so now you have, uh, there was an earlier talk about citizen journalism, the potential for people with their cameras, their smartphones, uh, to, uh, to take pictures immediately posted on their microblogs to hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, 
uh, viewers, which can then be uh, retweeted, uh, and uh, information can spread very uh, rapidly uh, in this way. Uh, having said that, though, uh, if you look at this, is a, a Google Translate of uh, last week's uh, most popular SENA microblog uh, rankings. And so you can see uh, most of these, if you can uh, see the letters, most of these uh, are uh, celebrities, uh, actors, singers. Uh, MBA is up there, I guess, <laughs> because of the, the playoffs. Uh, but uh, um, you can see then that uh, the most popular uh, SENA uh, blog, uh, uh, microblog uh, posters are relative, relatively innocuous. Um, uh, uh, apolitical kind of figures, and the government doesn't mind this. Of course, uh, there are a few uh, government figures who have set up microblogs. In particular, President Hu Jintao actually set up his own microblog in early 2010 on the People's Daily microblog site, uh, Renmin Weibo. Uh, but apparently, he didn't post anything, and I, I think since then he's actually deleted um, his Weibo. Another example here is Mao Xinyu. Um, who's the grandson of Mao Zedong. And so you can see Mao Xinyun kind of little pictures there. This is from last year um, in the, um, the fall, or, or the summer, actually. Um, but you can see that he likes to talk about his grandfather. So um, here we have some political figures also do um, some promotion, self-promotion. Um, notice, um, and I'm sure most of you uh, who are familiar with microblogs have seen this, uh, the small v here, indicating that, yes, he's verified. This really is uh, Mao Xinyu. Um, in the last uh, year, uh, some uh, uh, news events have been well publicized on microblogs, uh, which leads me to the last part of my discussion on the political impact or potential political impact of microblogs. And I uh, divide these into two different categories. One is uh, ones that uh, have potential political ramifications but don't cross a line uh, that the government sees as potentially challenging its authority. So uh, I'll give you just three very brief cases of that. Um, and then on the other side of the line are events that the government definitely wants to uh, suppress. In the case of the Wenzhou uh, train crash, uh, the government perhaps hesitated a bit on allowing people uh, to publicize uh, the, uh, the news of this uh, through uh, Weibo, but then I think decided that yes, it actually might be something they could turn to their advantage. The government announced that there would be an investigation of the crash, uh, uh, perhaps some steps to make, make sure that uh, the, the line would be kept safe. Uh, and so in this way, then the government was seen as responsive uh, to this important news event that was publicized uh, through uh, Weibo. Uh, this uh, other example also from last sem uh, summer, uh, Guameme. Um, who uh, you can see is uh, standing in front of her Maserati here. Um, she claimed uh, that she was an employee of China's branch of the Red Cross, and her microblog um, attracted as many as 1.4 million users. Um, it was then revealed that actually maybe just her boyfriend worked for the Red Cross, but um, this, uh, this uh, led to some outrage against uh, the Red Cross and did lead to some uh, maybe useful public discussion of how state-managed charities are operated. Um, and then the final case here is there was a Song Dynasty uh, porcelain uh, piece that uh, was apparently broken in the Palace Museum. Uh, some officials tried to cover it up. Again, Weibo came to the rescue, and so there was an investigation of how this uh, piece, uh, which was valued at uh, about $1.6 billion, actually uh, was broken. And uh, again, the government could uh, point to its efforts to stop this kind of mismanagement. Um, so generally, the government, I would argue, is tolerant of of issues where perhaps there's only local ramific uh, ramifications, things where they can uh, show that uh, maybe they are taking steps against corruption or mismanagement, um, and also issues that don't uh, reflect badly on, on the central government or call directly for uh, challenges to the Communist Party. Uh, in contrast to that, and I won't go into detail, uh, this Jasmine Revolution uh, was mentioned uh, a few times already uh, in the last couple of days, uh, but uh, this was something, uh, this call for uh, people uh, to, to gather in, uh, around McDonald's in Beijing in February of uh, 2011 uh, did uh, incur the wrath of the Chinese government. Um, and so demonstrations uh, were banned, and in fact the Beijing police banned uh, the sale of jasmine flowers uh, even for a few months uh, after, uh, after this uh, demonstration. Um, so uh, the larger question here is uh, how uh, really can these uh, microblogs lead to people being active uh, on the street and, and pre uh, present a visible challenge uh, to the Chinese government? Uh, we have seen, I guess, in the age before uh, Weibo, 
uh, that uh, the internet could get people out to, to protest. Uh, these are from anti-Japan pro uh, protests in 2005, which were inspired uh, by online petitions uh, and online postings. Uh, and the government did let these go for a few days because they were against Japan. They weren't against the government, but uh, when the government did sense that uh, they were perhaps going to morph into some kind of uh, movement that could get out of uh, control, uh, then they did crack down on the internet postings and stop people uh, from going out into the street. Um, so uh, in um, uh, my concluding uh, discussion then, uh, we can say that uh, the government, of course, uh, has a lot of tools uh, to prevent internet discussion. Uh, again, some of the speakers have already talked about uh, these tools before. Uh, maybe the ultimate tool is, uh, and they talked about self-censorship, uh, uh, word searches, and so on. Uh, perhaps the ultimate tool is to shut down uh, some of these communication services completely. Um, we did see, though, uh, after these riots in Xinjiang in 2009, that the government did shut off for several months internet access in Xinjiang and even uh, texting services. Uh, the, the, the bad part about this uh, was that uh, that led to a lot of rumors circulating in Xinjiang because people didn't have their usual sources of news. So that's uh, an ill effect the Chinese government didn't want to see. Uh, people with businesses in Xinjiang uh, suffered. Uh, we heard stories about people taking trains all the way to Gansu province just to check their mail um, or to upda update their, their business website. So uh, the government doesn't want to use that heavy-handed tool uh, if it doesn't have to. Um, just very briefly on that, uh, this also leads to the question of uh, rumors. Uh, the Chinese government, uh, even for online uh, services, uh, wants to make sure that people don't uh, uh, spread uh, false rumors and even uh, Chinese citizens uh, are uh, questioning the validity of some of the postings. Uh, last year in Guangzhou, a survey showed that 80% of microblog users had doubts about the auth authenticity of information that they found on microblogs. Um, in general, then, for uh, political issues, uh, the Chinese government uh, is allowing, I think, a wide variety of discussion. Um, also, uh, it's, uh, it's encouraging for economic reasons the growth of companies like Tencent um, and Sina, uh, but it does have uh, these kind of limits. Um, uh, and uh, maybe just the final word on potential for political change. I would say that uh, in the event that the Chinese economy uh, weakens, if there's a lot of inflation, if uh, uh, unemployment gets high as it did uh, in 1988-89, when, when we had the Tiananmen demonstrations, uh, then these kind of uh, tools could play a very important role uh, in, uh, in uh, perhaps uh, inciting people to go out on the street or to have uh, political demonstrations. But personally, I think that the economy at 7 or 8 percent a year GDP growth isn't in such dire straits. Um, or put it this way, the internet and microblog can be a spark to start a fire, but the wood isn't quite dry enough yet. Um, so uh, when it is, uh, though, perhaps it could be that microblogs or, or perhaps uh, uh, something that comes after microblogs uh, could be something that could lead to social instability. Thank you.